ever had this conversation about Sonic that if this didn't happen, this franchise would have been better or completely different. For example, one of the most common conversations is what if Sonic 06 wasn't rushed and was actually pretty good? The Sonic franchise would be a lot different. Maybe Sonic stories would have been a lot more darker in the future and have heavier stakes. Maybe this quote unquote meta era wouldn't exactly exist. Another example is what if Sonic Extreme actually came out? What if Yuji Naka didn't threaten to leave Sega and didn't hurt the development of Sonic Extreme? Would it be a spectacular success or a big failure? Hell, would Sonic Adventure 1 even exist the way it is now? And lastly, what if the Dreamcast was a successful console? Now, these are the most common what ifs for Sonic the Hedgehog and has been talked about and discussed for multiple years. And a lot of people have pretty good theories on what would happen, but there's this one what if that is rarely talked about, but indeed would make Sonic a completely different franchise in general. What if Sega and Sony actually collabed to make a console to beat Nintendo? Huh? Now, this is not a weird theory prediction. This was actually real at one point. Sega and Sony were going to make a console together, but one bad move killed it all. And now we live in that timeline where Sony and Nintendo are still thriving in the console industry, but Sega is the one left behind. It's 1993. Sega was still the leading gaming company and was basically untouchable. Sonic 2, Sonic CD, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Fantasy Star, Bomberman, Mortal Kombat 2, and a lot of famous Sega Genesis games that are recommended to get because of the Sega Genesis or at the time coming Sega CD because it was that good. They were dominating the video game industry basically beating Nintendo at the time, which was extremely rare. Light. <laughs> Also at the time, Sony was a fairly well-known company producing movies and CDs and a lot of technologies for other studios to use, but they decided to step foot into the video game hardware to sell on the market. You may not know that, but Sony PlayStation began life as a proposed CD add-on for Nintendo's Super NES. Licensing disagreements between the two companies basically killed the project, and Nintendo unfortunately decided to partner with Philips to create a CD-based add-on that basically never made it to the market before trying to make their own console. So that's why you see these Mario games and Link games that was on, you know, not a Nintendo console because they still had a little agreement, but not the console industry agreement. After basically hearing this information, I am sure Nintendo regrets choosing Philips over Sony because, uh, okay, now I can't tell if it was a blessing for Sony because these games are terrible. Sony really dodged the bullet, but at the time, Sony didn't think of it like that. Sony did not like getting rejected, let alone getting chosen over the CD rival company Philips. So the CEO of Sony thought, well, if Nintendo won't accept our offer, let's move on to their biggest competitor, Sega. It was well known that Sega behind the scenes really wanted to go into the 3D sphere and be ahead of the curve. So Sony thought it was a slam dunk of a deal and no way that they were defused. In an interview about E3 1995, Sega of America's former CEO, Tom Kalinske, he gave further details about the talks between two of the companies. Tom said this, Sony came after us after they had been rebuffed by Nintendo. And that really annoyed Sony, Olaf Olafsson, which was the president of Sony at the time. So Olaf, the president of Sony and Tom, the president of Sega, decided to meet up at the Sega headquarters. So Olaf decided to raise his speech up to 100 and said to Tom this, Tom, we really don't like Nintendo. You don't like Nintendo. We have this little studio down in Santa Monica, Image Soft, working on video games. We don't know what to do with it. We would like Sega's help in training our guys, and we think that this optical disc would be the best format. Now, be aware, these are the two presidents of the American versions of these companies, and not the Japanese. Sony of Japan knew about this conversation, but Sega of Japan didn't. Tom actually agreed with Sony's executives and proposed a partnership to finance a small developer called Digital Pixel who eventually created Night Trap, Sewer Tank, and Supreme War for Sega CD. Sega of America and Sony knew that adding a CD add-on to the Genesis was a pretty dumb idea, and they knew that they would lose a lot of money. <laughs> 
broke ass. But Sega of America and Sony's relationships was so strong, they really didn't care all that much and would split the loss of money. But Tom and Olaf thought to themselves once again, how about we just make another console together? So they both gave each other's huge pats on the back and got onto the first plane to Japan to talk to Sony of Japan's president, Ken Kutari. Ken thought making a console with Sega was an amazing idea. Sony is a very well known company in Japan, so there was no way this deal of a console between Sega and Sony wouldn't happen. So Ken, Tom, and Olaf went to a Japanese bar and partied all night, celebrating the future that was destined to happen. The next morning, Ken went back to his office while the two friends, Tom and Olaf, knew that they had to bring the news to Sega of Japan's president, Nakayama. Tom and Olaf were walking into Sega of Japan's office and they were pretty confident. They knew that this deal would be a slam dunk. So Tom and Olaf decided to pitch the idea to Nakayama-san. And all he did was stare at both of them with the most deadly blank stare ever. And said this. This is a stupid idea. Sony does not know how to make hardware. Hell, they don't even know how to make software either. Why would we want to do this? Get the hell out! Tom and Olaf was pretty stunned by Nakayama-san's comment. Not only Sega Japan rejected the deal, they straight up roasted Sony while doing it. Basically saying that they don't know how to do anything. They were inferior and weak. Eventually what Nakayama-san said started to spread and eventually Ken from Sony of Japan. And he heard the comments of Nakayama-san too. But Ken was pretty heartbroken. But mostly, he was pretty pissed. So Tom and Olaf realistically couldn't do anything to calm this down. All they could do was just fly back to America. Tom and Olaf knew the idea was going to be a success because it was going to be the introduction to the 3D market and the biggest mascot at the time was going to be the front face of it. The blue rat was going to be bigger than ever, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. <laughs> It's 1994, and Sony took what Nakayama-san said to heart. They were already mad at the fact that Nintendo brushed them off like they were nothing. Now, Sega did the same thing and more. Sony was on their own. Sony was working on their own console and were releasing on E3 1995. Unfortunately, that Sega was actually looking to sabotage Sony's press conference at the time and came before Sony. Sega introduced their new console, the Sega Saturn, which was priced at $399. Damn, boy, he thick, boy! That's a thick ass boy! People of the audience were obviously interested, but the price seemed a lot at the time. But it didn't matter, because Sega is a household name in the gaming industry. So Sony knew they had to show out, and they have to do something big to beat Sega at their own game. And everyone called this the price heard around the world. And Sony did this. Sony Computer Entertainment Presidents of America, Steve Race, join me for a brief presentation. <laughs> Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. That's it. Just one price killed the future of Sega. The Sega Saturn was done. And before the Dreamcast was even thought of, the Sega Dreamcast was destined to fall because of this iconic moment in gaming industry. The crowd was much louder than Sega's presentation. And the funny part is, the guy who said the 299 announcement, Steve Race, was a former Sega of America employee. Clearly, Sega of America is still on good terms with Sony of Japan. It's still so crazy to think, if Sega of Japan did not refuse the offer of the collaboration and most importantly didn't emulate them while doing it, this would have never happened. People like to say on May 11th, 1995 was the day that Sega unfortunately died. And honestly, yeah, it was. The Sega Saturn sales was around 17 million units, while the new guy in the block, the PlayStation 1, has sold more than 102 million units. There was a clear winner here 
here and the funniest part was that the Sega Saturn overall was the strongest console, although it still didn't matter. I might have not mentioned Sonic a lot during this video, but it was pretty common notion that behind the scenes that if this collaboration did happen, Sonic would most definitely been the front page image for the Sony and Sega console collaboration. Hell, Sony didn't even really have an official mascot. Well, it's kind of funny to say this now because Sony's mascot got bought by Microsoft, but whatever. Oh, small interruption. I do want to give a big shout out to Sonic Society of Texas. I've joined this server when Sonic Expos was announced and mostly because, well, I live in Texas. This server is a social hub for people who live in Texas or live near Texas. Although you don't have to live in Texas to join, anyone could join. They always do get togethers with people in the same area so they can grow a bond, including a lot of special events. I keep it right next to my server, just in case. Us Texas folks has to stand strong. Okay, let's get back on topic. Sonic could have been Sony and Sega's mascot. We could have officially had a 3D Sonic game in the mid 90s and not this fake 3D that was Sonic 3D Blast. And maybe if this did happen, Sonic Extreme actually could have came out. Like, come on, y'all can't disagree with me. But unfortunately, or fortunately, this is the future we live in. Sonic's Dreamcast failed and Sony is releasing their fifth generation of consoles. But hey, even with the crazy events that happened with Sonic in our timeline, I can forgive the bad decision by Sega of Japan. And all I can say in response to that is, How about next time you get a board that can handle the Neutron style? Later, Nick.